Gracias. Thank you. What you've just heard was an excerpt from the poem Uhil Mayab by Maya poet and winner of the National Prize in Poetry, Wildernane Viegas Carrillo. Who until just a moment ago thought that all opera singers had horns? We carried spears and we go around breaking glass with our voices. Who until a moment ago thought that opera could be written in Maya? What if I told you there are over 700,000 native speakers of Maya according to the 2010 census? Now what if I told you that you, your culture, your people, in fact, all people of the world, have a right to opera, just like the Maya. Before we begin discussing how bringing opera to the masses can change lives, let's take a second and look at what the term opera means. According to Webster's Dictionary, opera is a drama set to music and made up of vocal pieces with orchestral accompaniment. Now we know that opera has its origins in Italy, which is why the technique that opera singers use to sing is called bel canto, or Italian for beautiful singing. Science has taught us that in that particular type of singing in bel canto, there is a certain frequency of sound which is not found anywhere else in any other vocal musical genre, and it's called singer's formant. Now, singer's formant is between 2,800 and 3,400 hertz. And it explains why an opera singer can be heard over an orchestra without a microphone. Because you see, the orchestra is performing at an average of 500 hertz. We call this frequency singer's formant. And I propose that it is the it factor in singing of opera. But for those of you who were wondering, <laughs> The size and shape of the glass determine the frequency required to break it. Therefore, on certain very specific occasions, yes, opera singers can, in fact, break glass with our voices. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about what science is teaching us today about music. Many of you may have already heard of the so-called Mozart effect, where listening to Mozart can in fact create new pathways in the, between the two lobes of the brain. You may have also heard that certain types of sounds can generate healing in brain injury and Alzheimer's. Or perhaps you've heard that frequency of pitch, as in ultrasound, can generate healing in organs of the body exposed to it. Maybe you've also heard that singing and performing, as well as listening to music, can generate a release of dopamine in the brain. Now that is a neurochemical, neurotransmitting chemical that affects many parts of our bodily functions. In addition to that, science has taught us that when we sing together, our heartbeats begin to synchronize. 
And it's now believed that ancient tribes used this technique to unite the tribe, as well as share histories and stories, celebrate. Science has taught us a lot about music. But I'd like to go back. Let's look at Singer's Formant. Singer's Formant, if you'll remember, is that particular frequency found in opera and not generated in any other vocal musical format. As I mentioned earlier, I like to call it the it factor of opera because as a singing teacher or a voice teacher, we're always looking for a way to describe to students the technique of singing. And in order to achieve that technique, it requires a combination of elements between breath control and use of resonating cavities, very specific. So I believe that science has done that work for us and said, since this unique factor is only found in opera, and we tend to think it sounds good when we hear it as voice teachers, I call it the it factor in singing. I also wondered, what happens to the brain when it's exposed to this frequency? If we already know that a brain listening to Mozart can generate new pathways, what could this frequency be doing? Well, studies have shown, and we're still doing some research, that this particular frequency creates more than just new connections. It is actually like a super highway of processing human emotions. With more interlobal connections at velocities previously unseen, independent to perceived like or dislike of the genre. Meaning, you don't have to like opera to enjoy and benefit from it and singers form it. Science has been telling us a lot about music. But you see, when I was five, I already knew I was a singer. When I was 16, I thought, I want to bring this opera to the world. I want to share opera with the masses. And because of that, in 2010, I founded a project called Opera Maya. It's based on my belief that singers formant, the benefits of opera, belong to more than an elite class of well-dressed theater goers with socioeconomic affluence. Since then, every year, we have dedicated ourselves to bring opera to the masses throughout the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and defend the Maya culture and its language through opera. We have literally performed for thousands of people free of charge in small Maya communities. We have debuted winners of our national and international music competitions for new works in the Maya language. But more than that are the experiences that I've had through this experience. When people come to me and say, I never thought I would be someone who would be able to see or feel what I've seen and heard in opera. Or, for example, when I see a grown man exposed to opera for the first time burst into tears at his exposure. Or when parents come to me and they say, my student is asking for a musical instrument or voice lessons. Or perhaps even more impactful, when they tell us that their student is now no longer ashamed to speak their native language because they've seen us doing it. For these reasons, we've created this community of performers and audience goers alike who stay active in each other's lives Years after their encounter with opera, they find reasons to reunite. They tell us this has been a life-changing experience. Which is why I say that you, your culture, in fact, every culture in the world deserves opera. And that opera can change lives. <laughs>